If you want to customize your own computer without having to buy tools or spend a bunch of time in the workshop, you should check out v1tech.com. You can find professionally made mods like GPU backplates, sleeve cables, fan grills, and a bunch of other stuff, and you can use the discount code DIETECHMODS at checkout for 10% off any purchase. More info in the description. Hey, I'm Ditech, and I like to modify computer parts, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint your RAM just in case you have some RAM that doesn't match up with the rest of your computer's color scheme and you just want it to look better. There's a couple different ways how to do this, but they're all pretty easy and super cheap. So if you've never done any kind of computer modding before, this could be somewhere where you could start. Now I've got 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM here and it's black and I want it to be white so that it matches the case mod that it's all going in. Now even though Corsair Vengeance is mostly going to be featured in this video, I also have some other RAM sticks like uh, Trident Z and HyperX Fury and that kind of stuff. And I'll be showing those kind of at the end of the video briefly just to prove that all RAM is basically made the same way and these methods will work on whatever RAM you have. So the first and the most universal way of doing this, as in it'll work on pretty much all RAM ever, is to take the heat sinks off of the actual RAM sticks themselves and paint them separately. The Vengeance RGB RAM that I have here has this little top section that's kind of unique to it. Most RAM doesn't have a third little piece of metal that you have to deal with, but if you did get this particular kind, it's really easy to pull off. You just yank it. It's held on there by friction. But most RAM heat sinks are just held on by some double-sided adhesive thermal pads, and this is what we have to deal with if we want to get our heat sinks off. A lot of times that adhesive is pretty strong, so if you try to pull everything apart without weakening it first, there is a chance you might damage something. Fortunately, the best way of weakening that adhesive is also the easiest, and that's just to heat it up. If you have a blow dryer laying around, you could use that, or if you don't, I'll leave a link in the description to this heat gun that I'm using. It's pretty cheap, or you could just go to a local hardware store and pick one up for equally as cheap. And basically, you just heat up the RAM stick until you can pry off those heat sinks with just your fingers. And don't worry about the heat damaging anything. RAM is super duper heat resistant, so you're not going to hurt anything with your heat gun. Once everything is all apart, you can definitely just leave those thermal pads on the heat sinks and reuse them later. It's not going to be as sticky as it was, but it's not just going to fall off either. And obviously, if you're painting some kind of LED RAM, don't paint the part that actually lights up. Otherwise, it probably won't light up anymore. What I like to do to prepare the heat sinks for paint is just to remove all of the stickers and then take some sandpaper and sand it down very slightly. You don't have to go crazy with the sandpaper. Basically all I do is just scuff up the surface a little bit and make sure it's not like a glossy finish anymore. All you're trying to do is just put little scratches in the surface so that the paint has something to grab onto a little bit easier. And when you peel off the stickers, if there's any kind of adhesive residue left behind, you can just use some isopropyl alcohol to get rid of it. Once everything is all sanded down, there's going to be some paint dust left on there. Just take a paper towel and some water and wash that stuff off. Leaving the paint dust on there is not going to help with your paint job. Now once you're done with that, just wait for it to dry and then make sure there's no dust particles or anything on top of the surface of where you're painting, and then paint it. As for what paint you should be using, I use this Rust-Oleum enamel paint. You don't necessarily have to use the same type of paint that I do. You just have to make sure that the paint you do use is non-conductive. That's very, very important. And I suggest enamel paint because it's a little bit more heat resistant than a lot of other paints you'll find. Now to get the best paint finish, you want to do really, really light coats of paint. That means on your first two or three coats, if you can still see some of the previous color underneath your paint job, you are doing pretty light coats and that's a good thing. You want to wait until each coat is dried to the touch before you add another coat on top of it, so that probably would take, what, like 20 minutes? And then just keep layering coats on top of each other every 20 minutes or so until it looks good. Then once it looks good and it's dry to the touch, you might be tempted to put everything back together and then put it back into your computer, but you definitely should not do that. Wait like 24 hours because if you don't, even though the paint is dry to the touch, it's still not really dry, so it's very, very likely you'll scratch something. Now after you've waited the 24 hours and you're ready to put everything back together, you can either reuse the old thermal pads or you could replace them with new thermal pads, which is what I like to do because thermal pads are cheap. So when you have your 24 hour cured thermal padless heat sinks, just take your new thermal pads and slap them on there and put the dims back together the same exact way you took them apart. And yeah, I know there are certain versions of Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM that come in white already, but uh, this is just a proof of concept video. You can replace white with any color. Things 
Now that was how to paint the Corsair RGB Vengeance RAM sticks, but all other RAM sticks from all other manufacturers are basically made pretty much the same way. So you just take off the heat sinks, paint them separately, and then reattach them using some double-sided adhesive thermal pads. It doesn't matter what you say, sometimes it just works. This Trident ZRGB RAM is some more high-end stuff, kind of on par with the Corsair Vengeance, and as you can see, it's the same exact kind of steps, just take it apart and put it back together. And I did say that there were two methods of painting RAM, and this is the second way, and it basically only works if it's not LED RAM. Just take the stickers off the heat sinks, and then tape off the motherboard connection point with some just painter's tape, and then paint the thing without taking it apart at all. If there are any little holes in the heat sinks that you're painting, like there are in this particular RAM that I'm painting right now, don't worry about it too much because the non-conductive nature of the paint that you're using means that if any of the paint does get onto the PCB or any of the memory modules, it's not going to matter. So hopefully this video helped you with your own RAM painting. Like I said, this is a pretty easy mod to do, so even if you've never done any computer modding before, this is still something you can try. All of the tools and materials that I used in the video will be linked in the description along with my social media accounts like my Instagram and Patreon and Discord and that kind of thing. And if you like this video and you want to see more modding related content in the future, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next one.